Welcome to the Fab Lives Draping Challenge. For the past few months, we've been having so much fun behind the scenes putting this together for you. We could not be more excited to finally share it. In this challenge, players will go head to head draping an original look on custom half scale dress forms. And you'll get to vote and pick our winner. But instead of having the same old design challenges you're used to on shows like Project Runway, we've come up with something way more fun. Our design challenge will take the form of a story with some keywords missing. The players will draw the missing words at random to complete their own original design briefs. To start things off, the whole team at Beatrice Forms, Nathan, Sophie, Gabby, and myself will be the first contestants. It's gonna get a little weird. I also had an idea about using the inside of an embroidery hoop. It's gonna get a little personal. Punk rock, you guys. We'll look back fondly on our last in-person fabric shopping trips. All right, we're going to Joanne's. We're in a different state because it is the Midwest. And we'll aim to take amateur fashion design to new heights. Trying to decide. This reads fashion astronaut. So you'll definitely want to join us and our furry friends as we compete to see who will win the first Fab Lives Draping Challenge. All right, to kick things off, let's check in with our contestants as they pick their Fab Live words. Okay, so the first one is my adjective. Let's see what I get. Shiny! Here's my, what is this, adjective? Ad wow. Cottage chic. Sherlock Holmes vibe! Ah, I'm so excited! This is gonna be awesome! Okay, then I need to do style. Pleated. Beach wear. <laughs> Slinky, ooh. Grunge. How am I gonna do cottage cheek and grunge at the same time? I keep I'm... hearing that as cottage cheese, isn't it? Cottage cheese, now it's cottage cheek. Oh, I'm in trouble. You are in trouble. Last is design detail. A crop top. Shoulder pads. <laughs> Was that you? No. Shoulder pads. A keyhole. Oh, very exciting. <laughs> A popped collar. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you write that one? I did, I did. You're an intern at a highly regarded fashion house. In the wee hours of the morning, I accidentally spill my coffee all over a shiny pleated dress. A loud beachwear style dress. You accidentally spill coffee all over a slinky Sherlock Holmes vibe dress. Over a cottage chic grunge dress. Yes. <laughs> Panic ensues. I'm sure if I add a crop top to the design. You're sure if you add a keyhole. You'll see. You're sure if you add a pop <laughs> collar <laughs> to the design. You'll I'll surely wow the head of the atelier with my replacement. I'll surely wow the head of the atelier with your replacement. Hope so, or else you are out. I'm going to crush it. Here's what I was thinking. Who would I want to be interning for in the first place? I like things that have like a touch of whimsy. So my budget is Kate Spade, but I aspire to Scaparelli. So, Moschino. If I'm interning at Moschino for Jeremy Scott, I definitely don't want to get fired. But what is the outfit that I spill coffee on? So then I was thinking I have to have like a whole collection. And I was thinking fashion astronauts. Okay, so. For my fab lib, I got loud, I got beachwear, and I got a popped collar for my design element. The story I'm kind of constructing around this is that, uh, that this fashion house is coming out with a collection based around cold beachwear. When I say cold beachwear, I mean, think, uh, if you've ever been to San Francisco, think San Francisco's Ocean Beach, where at one o'clock it might be nice, you're wearing shorts, you're in a t-shirt, and then two o'clock that marine layer comes in, and it's cold, and it's windy, and it's humid, and what you really want is a puffy jacket around that time. So I um, was a little scared when I got cottage chic grunge with shoulder pads for my look. But then I did a little bit of research online and I realized that I actually 
was a grunge girl in the 90s. Hello. So I used to rock the the cutoff jean shorts with the band tee and then the flannel shirts and then the insulated flannel shirts and then definitely the Doc Martens. This is my plan. I am going to make a slinky dress with a keyhole. It's going to be in a uh, Sherlock Holmes vibe. So there's gonna be some plaid and there's gonna be some twill. I need to make a shiny pleated dress first. So I was kind of thinking about what what on earth does that even look like? So I came up with a, what I think is a cool idea. Um, and it, it actually looks kind of like a jellyfish. I think what I'm gonna try and do is make a puffy uh, maxi dress. And there are some do-it-yourself tutorials floating around there or on the internet um, about how to make your own puffy jacket. I think I'm just gonna try and follow one of those to create some fabric and then I'll, I'll drape on my model and then we'll just see how it goes. I'm looking online for grunge accessories and I'm like, oh my gosh, I used to wear all that stuff. Do you remember the ball chain jewelry? That was definitely my thing. Crazy piercings and stuff. I used to have these in my ears. My mom wasn't very happy about that. I thought a little bit more about how I could combine the cottage chic with the grunge. I figured out that we wore little bo boho kind of style dresses with our flannel shirts. So you can totally combine that stuff and it definitely works. And then like pleating, sun bursting out from the middle that kind of comes back into the legs a little bit. Um, so that way when you're in zero gravity, it can like move and shift. What do I add to this outfit to make sure that I'm not getting fired? So that's where the crop top comes in. And I was thinking maybe I would do some kind of like vinyl utility vest type of situation on the top that has a hood that can transform into your space helmet. And maybe you can have like your comms links inside of it. And I want that to be like totally, totally clear. I came up with this look where it's a cottage sheet dress with lots of kind of crochet details. I decided to make it short instead of long because then I could kind of get that silhouette of the short shorts, the cutoff jean shorts. I was taking inspiration from that and then doing a long jacket that is plaid. So I'm picking up the plaid from the grunge. That's where I can put my shoulder pads because shoulder pads don't really go in a shirt. <laughs> That's a little weird. Uh, a popped collar, that was actually my idea. Um, when I'm out doing chores and outside and it's cold, I like to flip my collar up and I thought that would be a, that would be a funny design element, but uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, gonna have to make it happen. So we'll see how things go. <laughs> So I went shopping last night. I have a $30 budget and I stayed within budget. So my first choice was this crazy fabric, uh, which looks like tinfoil. I got half a yard of this wacky stuff, which also looks like tinfoil, like a Hershey's Kiss wrapper. And then for the topper, for the vest part, this stuff. Okay, I'm back from the store and I have everything I need to make my look. I got two remnants, a gold and navy plaid cotton, and a gray and black marled jersey, gold and cream twill tape, rose gold metallic cord, and some brown and black buttons. Okay, went to Joanne's yesterday. I was 87 cents below the $30 budget. And what I got is some quilting batting, which I'm gonna be uh, using as the uh, the puffy material on my puffy jacket. And I also got some ripstop nylon of the loudest colors that Joann's had. I also tried my hand at some uh, some fashion illustrations. It didn't turn out so good. So what I'm probably gonna do instead is I'm just gonna take this quilting batting. I'm gonna work directly on the form with the batting. That's as far as I've gotten. I went shopping with Nathan. So I got this kind of silky, I'm sure this is polyester because I had to stay in the $30 budget and it's Joanne's tool or something. And then some lace, kind of crocheted lace stuff that said cottage chic to me. I wanted to kind of play with some shapes. So I got these guys and then I got 
these things, maybe it could be like communication wires or something. It's fashion, guys, fashion astronauts, you know? So they have to look like super fashion-y. And then for my coat, I picked out this plaid. Super fun, super 90s, super flannel shirt vibe. I went a little overboard. My version of 90s grunge has a little bit of punk rock in it. So I saw all of this fun trim with these metal details. I even got this up. And then for the helmet part, I was like, well, maybe I could use some kind of like clear beach ball or something. Um, but I really don't know where I would get one that like scale wise is just a little bit bigger than the head part of this form. I found these in the toolbox downstairs and I feel like they would give like a really good, kind of like boning, you know? I think people do use these for boning sometimes. I also have this clear acetate that I can cut in the shape of like, like a beach ball, right? Using that same kind of pattern to create the helmet. These little balls uh, can be kind of like your earpiece and your like little mouthpiece thing. I don't know, I really need to think a little bit more about this. like exaggerated curved boat neck that extends into some kind of like voluminous crazy cool sleeve. I don't know how fabric is gonna like how this fabric is gonna drape in zero gravity. Well uh, my fabrics are pretty stiff they're probably not gonna drape very well anyway. <laughs> so we'll see so if I do like that I've got this belt Oh my god, it's gonna be so puffy. This is when I am wishing that I had bigger boobs. It's hard to be drapey around. Not much. <laughs> Just checking in halfway through my drape, I went ahead and made a drape pattern for a notch collar jacket. It's going very slowly, which is not good, so I need to pick it up. Nice work area. <laughs> It's a disaster. This is the uh, limited edition Project Runway <laughs> Brothers sewing machine. See? See? So what do you get with a Project Runway sewing machine? I don't know, man. Let's see, what do I get? I get all kinds of stitches. Look, I have some four-leaf clover <laughs> stitches. I'm not sure if that's gonna help you with the current challenge. Uh, I'm screwed. I'm making a skirt. It is an orbit tool belt. So all of your tools will orbit around your body. I can't, that's so funny. So I ran into a little problem. The plaid that I'm using was printed on a diagonal. It's on the bias, so everything is skewed. There's no way I can possibly match the plants. Gotta get over it. Something I've been really happy about is how this, uh, how my puffy material has turned out. I mean, it, you know, it's no Patagonia, but it, uh, it's pretty good. I wonder if it'd be warm. What do you think? <laughs> so I finished. I think it is exactly what I was picturing when I came up with the concept. It hits all the, the blanks in my fab lib. So I've got the popped collar, 
the, uh, the beachwear effect. It's a maxi dress. Some loud colors that kind of remind you of a sunset at the beach. I added this little kangaroo pocket because I think that would be really helpful if you were on the beach and it was cold. This puffy material that I made uh, it turned out pretty well. I don't know how warm it is, but it certainly achieves the effect I was looking for. Things that didn't go particularly well, I think the construction leaves a little bit to be desired. The atelier would not be happy, but um, it, it gives the effect. This is where I'm supposed to say, vote for me. So vote for me. And uh, yeah. Ta-da! Here's my completed look. Grunge a la cottage chic a la shoulder pads, which I think gives this coat kind of the power look, no? I think it's looking kind of hot. This plaid was inspired by flannel shirts and I created this long coat. I made it long because I thought it would be really fabulous with some movement on the runway. Underneath for my cottage chic dress, I made a little rose out of the crochet trim. The dress itself is draped on the bias to hug my figure, because it's me. I also added the grudge jewelry, like I mentioned. And then the punk rock studded trim. I couldn't help myself. I think she looks fabulous with the giant studded belt. And then I did an asymmetric hem. What was hard about this? I spent a lot of time on the draping the jacket. I wanted to make the pattern first so that my plaids would sort of be in alignment. And so that sucked up a lot of my time. So I had to go a little more quickly on the dress. What else did I learn? Draping on the half scale is very, very fast. When you don't sew everything, you can kind of get an idea of the look without all the effort. For instance, when I made this coat, you can see, like I didn't sew any of this stuff down. It's just hanging out. I didn't finish any of the seams. So I had to do some sewing but I kept it to a minimum. If you like my grunge inspired look, feel free to vote for me. Thanks. Okay, here it is. I can't believe I'm finally finished. It took me forever. Note to self, don't do tailoring next time when you have an afternoon to finish it. All right, my Sherlock Holmes vibe slinky outfit featuring a keyhole. Here it is. So the Sherlock Holmes vibe, obviously plaid and a notched collar. It's a cute little cape, little button. There are hand arm slits, some shaped seams in the shoulders and a notched collar, which um, I have not done before, don't know how to do and didn't look up how. The back has a little box pleat, the twill, collar, pretty cute. And for the slinky, here it is. Ah! So this dress is made out of marled jersey. It's very black and hard to see. The cutout is heavily prominent. The bodice is draped. The back is most of my slinky, I think. Um, the Rose gold cord uh, looks really pretty. There's a closure here, hook and eye closure, where this opens and a waist tape underneath there that's holding all of this together and the bodice is secured onto that tape in the center front. Oh, there's a little bit of a slit in the side here that you absolutely can't see for ease of walking, you know? There it is. Cute little Sherlock Holmes goes to a party. <laughs> I hope you love it. Well, she's done. Fashion astronaut. Da -da -da -da. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So this challenge was really, really fun uh, and also really, really hard. <laughs> Some things that worked were my orbital skirt. It kind of hangs from you or floats around you. And then you can have little supplies that float around it. So when you need something, you can just grab it. So you don't even need pockets because everything is orbiting around you. The number one failure was the acetate that I had gotten for, didn't get, um, that I had, didn't really work out for the helmet. It was so, so floppy. The zip ties didn't work either. They were too short, but I do have a bowl. So you can see and imagine in your head 
what it would look like if it had a helmet. When I was working on this, it was um, kind of a challenge because this fabric, it is like working with a shower curtain liner. This skirt ended up being pleated all the way around. Let me show you the back. So I wanted to dip down and kind of mar marry the shape of the um, top going down into the skirt. Um, I didn't end up doing that kind of like hoodie vest thing. Once I had this crop top going, it was like clear that was the entire look. So I ended up using the beads as kind of like a suggestion of like air tubes. Maybe one is going in and the other is taking out those balls that I showed you at the beginning, I ended up using for, this could be a mouthpiece kind of situation, and here's her earpiece hanging from what would be the helmet. Um, anyway, so that's my look. In conclusion, I should totally win Fab Libs because if there is ever a word to describe this fashion astronaut situation, it is certainly fab. Cheers to that, Gabby. I think we can all agree that every one of our contestants' looks were certainly fab, but there can only be one winner, and that's where you come in. Click right here to vote for your favorite look. Will it be Nathan's I'm at the beach and it's freezing collection for seaside glamour in the shadow of the Golden Gate Bridge? Or will it be my I Heart the 90s power plaid jacket and cottage chic ensemble. And who doesn't love Sophie's slinky and smart looking Sherlock Holmes goes to a party look. And finally, there's Gabby's fashion astronaut who's going to the moon, but also wants to look like Barbie. So there you have it. The choice is gonna be hard, folks. What a lineup. Oh, and the best part is that all of our Fab Libs contestants in this round are playing to win a $250 donation to a charity of their choice. You can read below in the description uh, which charities they're supporting. Our hope is to have some fun and help out those in need during these challenging times. Until next time, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm, I'm finishing up one of the uh, coverings for my maxi dress, <laughs> puffy maxi dress. Aren't you glad you have all these piles of electronic equipment around you? Yeah, it's, it's Is important. it helping it's important. with your sewing project? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> How about this spray bottle? <laughs> I'll edit this out, okay, grunge. Is the style? I don't want your cottage cheese. You want my cottage cheese? So, I so I could kind of see them when I, when I looked at the bowl to pick it up. So you have to not look at the bowl. Oh, so you can see them, huh? I, I didn't pick, I didn't pick it, but you can see them. I didn't cheat. How about these piles of paper next to you? No. <laughs> I take it that's water. It's water.